All right, working on this ground mount. Gonna be an adjustable ground mount. Basically, I'm gonna have three four by sixes in a row right here. You know, kind of going where this board's going. I'm gonna put 12 of the 305 watt panels I got on there. So I'm gonna start making the holes so I can get the four by sixes in the ground, get them concreted in. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Got this uh, Ryobi 40 volt auger. And we're gonna try this thing out. And instead of getting a gas one, I said I was gonna go electric since got solar, I can charge the stuff, of course. Trying to go electric with everything. So we're gonna see how this works out. Can't do it with everything, but you know, everything I can do it with. But we're gonna see how this thing works. I think right about here, I think it's where I wanna be. Never tried this thing before, so let's just try it out. Well, I guess as you can see, <laughs> I had the thing on low. Went right on down in the ground. See if I can get the thing back out. And it's not gonna be deep enough yet, but as I do is maybe I should have moved some of the dirt before I took the thing out of the hole. Learn experience for me using this thing. Move some of this dirt out of the way. Now I can actually get the auger a little deeper. So let's go ahead and try that. Didn't have the camera on, but I moved some of that dirt out of the way. Let's see if we can get a little deeper. Things already broke. All right, use this thing for less than one hole. So let me pull this thing out, figure out what's going on here. Look, look at this, this thing's not even touching anything. You can probably hear that noise. So now when I'm always saying that if somebody's gonna get something that's gonna be messed up, we're gonna have some weird problem nobody's ever seen, it's gonna be me, one hole. And the thing's already, you know, faulting out. I'm gonna get the manual, I guess, to see what's up with it. But all it's doing is making a, a, a noise, but the motor's not moving. So, and it's not saying fault or overload. It is green, so I don't know what's going on with the thing. But can't get one job done without having a problem with something.
As you can probably see, I got all three of the poles up. So I went and traded in the auger, got the exact same one, basically got a replacement, dug the other three holes. It did work pretty good on the second one. Not sure what was going on with that first one. Basically on the first hole, the thing froze up and the motor, you know, it was making a noise, but it wouldn't move. So right now I'm trying to get all these lined up and I'm basically cutting the tops off. All right, I already got the first one cut right here. And now I'm about to cut the second one, then make sure it's level on the third one, mark it, and then cut that one. I love when the wind changes directions. All right, Mike might be in the wind. Love when the wind changes directions. As soon as I start cutting, the wind had been blowing, you know, back this way. Now it's blowing this way. So stuff blows right in your face every time you try to cut. That's why I got this on. And, uh, you know, I, I use this to cover up my neck so I don't get my neck all burned up. And then I can also pull it up, check myself from the stupid pressure-treated wood, you know, inhaling all of it. And a lot of people are going to take stuff like this and put a string line on it and do all this stuff. You know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing all that. You know, I'm basically going to kind of eyeball it. Basically, I'm going to put a, a straight bar or a piece of unistruct on top of this one, go over to the other one, put a level on it, mark me a line, and it's definitely, it's gonna be close enough for what I'm doing. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, because, you know, I can always just adjust where I put my hole through the wood, you know, get them perfectly uh, all level, but, you know, this should be fine. That's how I built my other one. I wouldn't string line anything, I was eyeballing stuff, putting a piece of wood on the ground, making me a straight line, you know, and it all worked out. As you can see, I got these three, poles basically in a line i didn't put a string out or anything like that and try to make make it perfect i eyeballed it got it in there bam it worked so i'm gonna go ahead and get a level on this and make sure it's right and mark it off i'm gonna take my level get it close make sure it's level over there on that one level right now showing right in the middle and i'm basically just gonna mark it off man be quiet dude All right, got all three of them cut. Now I can start making some holes. Basically, I'm gonna be putting a, a 7 8 bolt right through here. So about right here where this little screw hole was where I was doing some uh, uh, testing and measuring. I basically put that two by six right there up there with a screw to kind of measure the angles. I'll go ahead and show you that. I got a couple of pictures and videos of that. And basically I just angled the thing down to make sure nothing's gonna be blocking it. You know, basically nine o'clock in the morning when the sun kind of gets on this side, I want the, the panels to be in the sun as long as possible. Bam, get this thing going. So basically what, what I'm doing is gonna pull the hole right in the center, halfway through the board. So I think this, you know, two by six by 10. All right, it's actually 10 foot and three eighths. So I think I need to go to, to five and three sixteenths. I'm gonna put the seven eighths hole. Might be able to do an inch hole, but I'm gonna try a seven eighths and see how that does. It might actually have to go up to a, a inch to make let the bolt go through easier. So what I've learned in the past doing these is I like to turn the board over. And just finish from this side. That way the wood won't chip out as bad on this side usually. Even though this wood seems to be chipping pretty bad anyway. And basically I'm waiting on my bolts to get delivered. And I just saw a delivery truck, but I think it was FedEx. I think mine's coming UPS. So I'm gonna see if the bolts are here. All right, no bolts delivered yet, but I did get delivered a, the auger extension. Because if I haven't said already, I'm gonna try to build two of these ground mounts. So I'm gonna do this first one. Everything works good, I'm gonna build one just like it for another 12 panels. So I'm gonna have two of them. And uh, so next time I have to dig out at all, I got an auger extension. So I'm gonna use the auger to dig down all the way. Bam, that's gonna give them a distance to make sure I get down four feet or whatever without having to dig. So basically I'm gonna have two of them two by six boards on each side of this. And then in between that, I'm gonna put, you know, uh, basically cut this in half, put it at either end. I did see a video uh, from a guy, what's his channel? 
I think it's tech for you, I think is the channel name. So after I kind of designed this on paper, I started going on YouTube and look for one. And basically his has basically the same, close to the same design. So he's gonna have a lot more wood than me. I'm hoping not to use all that framing wood that he used. And I think he had enough where he cut four of these pieces to put in between those two two by sixes, one at the top and the bottom, and then one kind of in the middle of each one. So I'm gonna try to put one just on the ends and then try to put a, a two by six going across uh, the ends to connect you know, both sides on the top and the bottom. He had two going across the top and the bottom and two more in in the middle. And then he put his unistrut across that. I'm hoping to do my one on the top, one on the bottom, and then you the unistrut the long way and mount the panels uh, a different way than he mounted them. But we'll just have to see if it works. I got enough wood where I can change it if I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure these and cut them in half. So basically what I'm gonna have is, you know, a two by six on the bottom and then a two by six on the top, you know, sandwich in between and screw this thing in to make it more stable. So when it's kind of going, you know, the two by six is gonna be a one on this side, one on that side, and then the, the four by six in the middle, bracing them together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest. All right, now I'm basically putting the hole to the four by six, getting it prepped for the two by sixes. I'm gonna show you one, but we're gonna do it on all three. And basically what I like to do, as soon as tip starts coming out the other side, you start from the other side. That way, you know, you don't chip out a bunch of wood. I did it on the first one, I chipped out a bunch of wood. Wasn't meaning to, but it just popped through. Knocked out a little chunk of wood. If you're not trying to do that, then you stop and come from the other side. I'll go ahead and show you. I'm definitely not a woodworker, a builder, or any of that stuff. I, I just do what I gotta do to get something done. Not that I know what I'm doing. But as you can see right there, where it starts to come through. Now I gotta start back from this side and finish it off to make it look more clean if possible. So as you can see, it doesn't look as chipped out as the other one looks a little more clean. And what I did, of course, to make sure it was level, just to verify again, before we start punching the holes in. Take your unistrut, you lay it on its side. Usually that's gonna be the flattest part. So you level on there, and bam, right in the middle. Then you measure again and, and drill your hole. Two and five eighths, and two and three quarter. As you see, bam, right there, got the hole already coming through. Bam, and pretty clean. All right, the bolts and stuff and the hardware arrived. I had to order the hardware because it's grade eight. I couldn't find it at any local hardware stores. I looked at several places, and maybe they had the stuff locally, but I couldn't find it. So I ordered it from McMaster uh, Car. I've ordered a few things from them when building stuff in the past, and basically they ship overnight because usually they ship for businesses and stuff. And the shipping is not that expensive. I think it might have been like thirteen dollars, but there's a lot of stuff that costs more than that. And you know. And you don't get it overnight. I mean, it takes like a week or two. So basically, the grade eight bolts, because I've been trying to do some research, trying to figure out all this stuff myself. You know, it's going to have basically the six little lines on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. The six little lines on it, as you can see. That way you know it's grade eight. And the tensile strength of it, I think it's like 150,000 PSI or something like that. So it definitely shouldn't break. You know, I'm no engineer. So if you want to do something like this, hey, do your own research. But, you know, I'm going to try this out. You know, I think it's going to be good. So I drilled a one-inch hole. These are seven-eighths seven bolts, and that worked out pretty good. It goes right through there. So basically what I got is I put a flat washer on the outside, and then a flat washer on the inside. And we're going to run it through here if it fits. You're gonna take another flat washer and then another board. All right, might be able to, yep, it should work. At least you got a bolt, a washer, got a washer in the middle there, another washer in the middle of that side, then a flat, a lock washer, and a nut. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. All right, now basically we're gonna take a couple of screws and put this four by six extra spare piece at the bottom to connect the two pieces. So basically this piece right here 
Man, come on, rooster. Be quiet. This piece right here is going to go in between there. We're going to get it all lined up. But we're going to get a couple screws started first. Now I'm going to try to get it all lined up. All right, so as you can see, got it kind of all tied in together now on one end and do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we're cutting the two by six so we can, you know, go from the front of that one to the front of this one. I'm gonna try to go to about the halfway point in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and then get the thing connected. So make it a little more sturdy. So hopefully that'll stiffen it up and they'll be able to move together. And I should be able to use that that scrap piece to go across the front to connect the two. All right, gotta cut this board nine foot seven inches and 15 sixteenths. They see that's what, you know, the distance is to make it equal in between the top of the two poles here. It'll make it equal here. You know, I guess trying to keep everything as square as possible. That's how I'm gonna do it. All right, let's get this thing cut. I guess my battery's dying. I got like that much more to go. Let me grab my other battery. Yeah, definitely gonna have to have that brace right here in the middle. You know, the thing's trying to separate when it's moving. Put that brace across there like this. Basically, it'll go between the two, something like that, and brace the two together. So, I guess this would be part one of the uh, ground mount build. It has been a couple days, but I was having to get more stuff waiting on stuff so uh, i tried to do this probably in a couple days if you want to see the rest of the build and you're interested in it hey go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button and thanks for watching